Please go ahead, sir. We are live now. Sense of gratitude on behalf of Asochan. I would like to welcome you all in today's knowledge management virtual meet. This is Bharat Jaswal, Regional Director, Asochan, on emerging technologies for learning. A total of three, three, 320 million learners in India has been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Last year was a tragic for students' point of view. The, the learner's loss is high and with and every bo on both government and private sector will need to work together on a roadmap to deal with this and minimize the loss. The government has put a lot of effort, but we need to invest more in bettering the digital infrastructure for improving the life and learning of students. With the internet penetration rate estimated to reach Above 55% by the end of 2023 in India, the digitization of education remains one of the topmost priorities of our government. India's online education market for class 1 to 12 is projected to grow to US dollar 1.7 billion by 2022, while the post A12 market is set to grow 3.7 times to touch dollar 1.8 billion, according to a report. The government's Digital India initiative under the national education policy also underlines the need for strengthening the the need of the for the industry and the academy to collaborate and design courses amid to make our professionals future ready. Keeping this in view, Asocham organizes today's program. In today's webinar, we have with us a mix of both industry and academia. We have with us Dr. M. K. Vajpayee, Co-Chairman Jharkhand State Development Council and Vice Chancellor Capital University, Jharkhand for delivering a welcome address. The session moderator today is Mr. Manu Seth, he is CEO for Speaking Minds Inc. and International Business Consultant at CEO's Net Club Network. The esteemed panelists includes Mr. Mukesh Sina, co-founder Gravitas AI, Mr. Devin Narayan, Director, Soviet University. Ms. Divya Lal, Managing Director, Flip Learn Educations Private Limited. Ms. Jyoti Tiwari, Founder and CEO, Indigenous Minds. Mr. A.P. Sarma, Principal, Birla Public School, Qatar. Mr. Raghav Poddar, Chairman, Poddar Education. Mr. Vishnam, Vist, Founder and CEO, Marksman. With a deep sense of gratitude on behalf of Asocham, I'd like to welcome all the experts, speakers in today's program. I would also like to welcome the delegates joining with us today from the various parts of the country. I have every hope that today's webinar will be a fruitful one. With immense pleasure, I would like to and request Dr. M. K. Vajpayee for delivering the theme and the welcome address to set the tone of today's discussion. Dr. Vajpayee is co-chairman Jharkhand State Development Council and vice chancellor Capital University. He has around three decades of experience in industry, academia, institution building, university administration, brand, branding, national and international collaboration tie-ups. Sir, over to you, Dr. Bajpe. Thank you, Varad. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. First of all, I would like to welcome all the participants and then definitely the audience, those who are listening on the link. Today, this SOHM Digital Education and Innovation Conference or webinar, what we can say, See, we are discussing on the opportunities and challenges. We will discuss in detail in this event today. We have speakers and then we have expert panelists also. But before that, it is my duty to welcome all of you, especially the participants and uh, uh, we have Mr. Manu Seth, uh, he is CEO of Speaking Minds. Uh, Mr. Bharat is 
uh, I would like to, uh, it is not, I mean, good to welcome you, but I would like to say you are coordinating all events and then event programs of SOHM regularly, even in the situation when you were suffering from COVID. So during that period, you were active also. I saw you organize some events with the help of your support office and then it is wonderful. Really, this type of uh, uh, the dedicated persons are important for SOHM. And I'm proud of being part of SOHM Jharkhand chapter that I had already explained in the National Council meeting also in education, sorry, in SOHM. So uh, I would like to welcome Mr. Manu Seth, uh, Mr. Mukesh Sinha. I'm not going to explain the designations and activities in detail because you have already explained. And Mr. Devinder Narayan, my friend, already I can see after a long time you on the screen. <laughs> So, and Divya Pal, Jyoti Tiwari, Mr. Raga Podar, uh, Mr. Vishal Bist, uh, Mr. A.P. Sarmaji from Qatar, good to see you. And finally, all the participants and attendees connected with SOHM this event program, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome all this event from on, our, on behalf of the SOHM. See that I always, when I start from the last one year from 2020, in every discussion, I first start with this sentence that SOHM is the largest and oldest apex chamber, which was established in 1920 and now the cross more than 100 years the legacy of the chamber and the uh, the credentials if you see go back the SOHM has been con contributing a lot for the business sector and for the policy makers and definitely when we are talking from the digital education and digitalization now definitely the experts will give the views and definitely the findings, latest trends and technologies, what is happening in the industry. All these points definitely will be covered in the session. But in nutshell, I would like to tell you the importance of digitalization is now why so important. We have been talking from a long time about the digital digitalization, latest trends in technology. IT information system and now we are focused suddenly I, I think now we are insisting all institutions even the business sector and government that you should be 100 percent digital and the digital India program of the government central government I can say proudly the vision of our prime minister Sri Narendra Modi ji when he started working, I, I remember a few years back, the people said that, oh, how can banking will be totally digitalized and how can see? So this, we have a rural areas, we have villages, but now you can see the benefit of digitalization. And then people are even going to use to do, to handle all these digital platforms. I can see in rural areas also, if you talk to a child, then he's also able to operate to a, a digital system. He knows how to use YouTube. He knows how to use laptop, computer. Even on mobile, everything he can do. So definitely there is a lot of changes in digital information system and digitalization. A 100% digital transformation era is now, we can say we, we are looking forward. Definitely the things will change. I can give you example of how this digital platform helped us. Everybody, because the technical things, the technical experts will definitely discuss, but I am giving you very simple exam example. See, during the COVID-19, 
last one and a half year when the whole world is suffering with this disease we were depended we were depending for the supply of medicines supply of food items even for any business transaction traveling even if you go to the school education university system when everything were totally paralyzed because of the covid the only one solution that time we had the it the digital digital system the technology helped us only the person who was lying on the bed in the home at at, at his home and then taking paracetamol or fever or whatever covid medicine and if the medicine because the person cannot go to the medicine shop the only we got support from the digital platform we got medicine online not only that even for the food supply chain tomato swiggy or whatever you can say it was very easy to just log in on the app and then order for food and then in that situation also you when you were not going outside people not we are able to go or work outside because of that pandemic that time also you got food supply medicine supply everything at your home because you have a strong digital platform so there is no doubt my dear friends digital platform digital transformation is very very important need now and after some time few years i mean within 2 3 years you will see more than uh, more than 80% because i cannot say because we have rural areas also villages also there are definitely there are some internet problems and then technical issues are there so it will take time but the 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 time will come when people will say yes the digital transformation is the only solution for the problem <coughs> what we are facing and then this will help to us not only for the support in business support in activities but it will also change our social life also the digital platform now you see the facebook google then uh, uh, whatsapp youtube the everything we, these had impact on our social life we are connected to each during this pandemic covid period also we were able to connect each and everywhere each everybody so we we, we were connected on facebook we were connected on google uh, sorry uh, whatsapp like this so why this is important i am trying to just insist on this point only that this is the need of the time this is the requirement of the time because as per the as per changes when the time changes you have to keep pace with the latest taste trends and technologies you have to change accordingly otherwise you you cannot survive so that's why uh, in education sector also those who are from education sector they can also understand very well that for the last one year what is happening our kids are not going to school university students they are not coming to the university to to the college because of the problem but yes thanks to this digital platform thanks to it sector i am again saying that thanks to this this platform that they have supported they have given apps they have given solutions and our kids are now learning at home our kids are not going to university but they are learning at home with the apps and many apps now the byju's and then vedantu and so many other you, you see i cannot say there are so many apps and yesterday there is the uh, one person from bhilwara he contacted me he said ki i have invented uh, something which is very new in education sector and then he explained me and i am not going to declare now because this is very confidential you will change after 10 15 days there will be one 
innovative things which will come to the market which will change the whole scenario of the education sector complete change the psychological problem for the stu students the homework problems the 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 university students uh, suicide problems coaching center quota like suicide problems learning system then the workload of the students teaching methodology which uh, i am also a teacher but i cannot say ki this the teaching method is 100% perfect no even it sector people apps are teaching better than us at apps are teaching better than us so these things will come to our uh, to to our, to our nation and very soon this this app this this is not app but this is the technique which will but with the help of it will this come so i am again saying <laughs> this innovation which i yesterday came to know could be possible could happen to possible because of the it because of the digital platform otherwise this was not possible so again and again i am not going to i am not actually publicizing publicizing uh, i am not going to publish the or i am uh, just praise the it sector but this is my moral duty also that definitely digital platform has changed the whole scenario uh, in banking system also if you see earlier earlier we were dependent when we are going to the bank now you can click a mobile and then handle all transactions within a within a minute within a 10 within 10 15 seconds so all these things are happening because of the it system and then a strong digital flow one very very important news i will tell you this is which i just uh, uh, got to know day before two three days back you know in india there was one sector in business which was which is called share marketing share trading stock marketing before this pandemic i mean two years three years two years back very few people were knowing about this stock marketing even i was not interested in this many people who were in rural area they were not able to earlier stock marketing was only possible when the physically the <laughs> business or the traders they, they they were going to the stock market and then doing the physical uh, transaction now the it has changed everything you know they, the traders are not going there they are sitting in the office they are sitting at the home i am sitting at my home and then my doing the transactions 100 crores 10 crores this is the reason why the it sector the digital platform is important now more than you say earlier the ratio of the stock market traders for the retail marketers i mean retail marketer means like my means you and me who are not basically the traders not businessmen but sitting at home you are also doing sometimes trading this type of traders have ratio has increased more than 37% 337 my mean 37% earlier this was only 2 3 3 years back this ratio was only between 5 to 10% so this is the gift of it sector this is the reason of digital transformation the whole thing whole business is going to be changed and then digital platform now only the media earlier we were reading newspaper going to just one newspaper and then we were depending on the news now we are getting all world's news complete world news on my mobile so there see there are lot of example i am restricting my words because the time i don't want to take more time you people will discuss in detail in a uh, technical parts but i am yes, going to yes. the digital platform digital transformation is now live for us this is the life actually and after five, few years suppose suppose that if the the electricity the electricity is now live without electricity we cannot live so the same thing happen will happen after few years when we will not be able to live without digital transform digital system thank you so much and thanks to all experts panelists my friends 
for organizing and then uh, discussing on this burning topic, burning uh, uh, matters. This will definitely not help to us, but this, this topic discussion, definitely I would like to suggest that please conclude this discussion and just make a few four or five points, whatever important, so that we can send suggestion to the government also. That will yeah. help. Otherwise, only discussion will not help the matter. So yes, conclude sir. it after meeting, note down five, two, three suggestions so that we can send to the government also. That that is my submission. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Uh, thank you very much, sir. After this, uh, thank you very much for taking time joining with us. After this inspiring word from Mr. Vajpayee, I feel in welcoming Mr. Manu Seh. He's a session moderator. He's CEO for Speaking Minds in and international business consultant for CEO's Club Network. He is motivated business leader with a passion for creating value, innovation and delivery, driving technology services that has been uh, positive impacted on people's life. Well over 25 years of demonstrative or professional experience in driving and scaling business at national international market. So I hand over the stage to you, over to you, Mr. Seth, from here onwards. Thanks, Bharat. And uh, thanks, SHM, for putting up such a great platform. And uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Vajpayee Sab, a lot of good uh, words of wisdom and great insight. And uh, like you mentioned about some great platforms, we also have with us in today's session a very visionary and a charismatic leader. She is also leading one of the platform and I'm sure we will hear good and some uh, challenges and some upcoming opportunities on a great platform. And I'm sure uh, we will hear from Divya that how they have seen this as an opportunity. But two things we picked up from you, Dr. Vajpayee, is that you were able to do transactions worth 110 crores. And I'm sure a lot of people of us who need investments, we will definitely come to you and seek some help and guidance to do those kind of transactions. So uh, thanks everyone for taking out time and uh, coming for this platform. And uh, taking from what Dr. Vajpayee said that, yes, it's a good, opportunity where this whole scenario has made all of us learn a lot many things and i'm sure all of you people will have a lot of great insights so we will do in more of a kind of an interaction where we can understand what were the opportunities which you people in cashed upon i'm sure some people would have in cashed opportunities some people would have seen some kind of challenges and how do we see that how uh, uh what is your advice or what are your words of wisdom that how people should have handled these situations, whether it was kids, whether it was parents, whether it was the communities, because kids, they have not even met their friends for long. And at the end of the day, they are all your target audience. We are inspiring a lot and many. So uh, to kickstart, why don't I, I start from Dr. Dr. Mukesh, from you here, and how do you see the future opportunities, the future technology where people are really talking about technology is really becoming a great thing is a great tool and how do you see it is bringing a transformation in our daily lives and definitely from a perspective of education uh, thank you very much uh, mr manu uh, uh, we are in fact dealing in the business of uh, uh, conversational ai so you know ai these days uh, whether you know and you don't know it is making inroad in your houses every day, every field, in fact. And of course, education, particularly last one and a half years, uh, it is coming more and more. So when you talk about the role of AI in the education, uh, I think it's been there for uh, some period of time for over a few, few years. But particularly during the lockdown, uh, when we see that uh, uh, whether it is a uh, metro cities or it is uh, villages, whether it is a uh, con convent school or it is uh, like a municipality school, all these digital divide has been broken. Everybody's on the education through online platform. Online platform digitalization is one part of that. Okay, uh -huh. you can able to access the education, but how you can make it interesting? How this, because particularly when you are particularly kids and who are on the primary or maybe a, a middle school it is important to have they should be engaged and involved in the education then the learning will be complete 
so over period of you know ai uh, has been emer emerging a lot and even uh, uh, education can be very very uh, fun kind of activities uh, when we okay. talk about ai basically uh, you are saying that you don't need to go for the entire whenever you have any dot and question just type certain keywords and all this relevant information would be coming so that making you engagement so the moment you okay this dot is clear then you go for the next dot and that's involving you to know more and more so ai is in fact uh, uh, getting big inroad in, in the education sector also and irrespective of the level it is like uh, your entry level middle level and of course colleges and other things are also there no no perfect um, I think you really touched a good point, Mr. Mukesh. So yes, I'll come back to you. And you spoke about the AI, and from there we can really hear how these new platforms or these new uh, initiatives on the technology platform they are leveraging. But before I move on to that platform, which is a very exciting platform, I would love to hear from Dr. Devendra as his words of wisdom, because this whole scenario would have changed and played a lot of role on the mindset of the students, the community, as well as the institutions also. So how you felt, Dr. Devinder, that uh, things could have been handled or have people handled it in a best way or what have been the learnings? Uh, thank you, Mr. Manu. See, definitely the last uh, one and a half year is a phase of learning only for us. I mean, it, uh, it is the right time when uh, normally I use a word, uh, a phrase that uh, learning and relearning. So this is a phase where uh, almost everybody uh, of us an opportunity to le uh, relearn the things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I start this thing with an example. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, I mean, this example is with the university I'm working with. Mm -hmm. On 17th March, when uh, the things are uh, coming up that uh, the, the lockdown is going to happen and uh, a lot of uh, trouble is going to, uh, we are seeing in future. So university immediately decided to provide uh, teaching facility to those students. And uh, at that time, uh, most of us are not very much aware of, about the different tools which can be used. Yes, of course, we heard about video conferencing. We heard about uh, Outlook, we, we heard about chatting and all these things, but not using those tools, particularly for the education purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. And being the, the Shobit University is based in a rural area. So it is a tough for uh, basically more tough for us. So what we uh, immediately, the uh, teachers or the uh, academic board decided that we need to do the needful for the students. So you won't believe that uh, our teachers used uh, email, they used WhatsApp, they used uh, messages, messengers for providing content to the students. Okay. Okay. So uh, that is a very initial phase when, uh, because the students are having a problem because um, I mean, most of the rural belt is still, uh, they are not able to get uh, more than 2G uh, connection in the internet. Correct. So they Correct. always face problems. So, uh, so I mean, whenever we try to tell them that, okay, and surprisingly, the student responded very well. I mean, they, they understood the problem and they immediately cooperate with their teachers, they cooperate with the university, and they, they start responding accordingly. So, mm -hmm. suppose if I, the student have to submit an assignment, they write it down on a piece of paper, they click the photograph, and they send it through WhatsApp. Okay. Or if anybody is not having that facility, some of they're able to manage and they send it through email. So these kind of happenings are there. So basically, when when it comes to the uh, you know uh, use of technology in teaching, I always believe that uh, it is very important that uh, you know the the teacher uh, fraternity is having their that experimentation is very important. Correct. And along with that, that willingness of engaging the learners in uh, with the uh, you know creation of a learning resource, and it is not a one way uh, thing. It is both teacher and student. Correct. 
that yeah, I, I, I was coming to I was coming to that only like you used a very good phrase learning and relearning I was just curious to know like as we said that the way students were adapting the technology were you also facing some problems where the faculty administration staff or the community was also adapting to the technology because it was both ways it's like one is being a supply and one is taking a demand so how were you coping up with these kind of situations in the system. I start with a lighter mode. I, I just give you an example. It's, it's okay. a couple of years back only. Uh, one of my uh, colleagues said, sir, I am not able to prepare. I am not able to uh, do my projects because I have to attend a lot of uh, webinars. Okay. 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 So okay. I think this is, this is, this is another disadvantage uh, on a certain point of the uh, access of adopting the technology. Correct. Correct. The balancing is required. Yeah. Yes, of course. Initially, as I told, uh, when uh, students are sending their, uh, you know, uh, assignments on uh, through different modes, mm -hmm. the teacher have to collect them. So they have to prepare their lessons, then send it them to the student through into in, in the way of note. Then mm -hmm. they have to collect uh, these uh, assignments from a different mode. I mean, some mm -hmm. have sending through mail, some have sending through WhatsApp. Some, some sending through other media. So, you know, the, the teacher, yeah, definitely they're going to be, you know, a little bit uh, uh, frustrated. Uh, what what we do? Correct, correct. So, so definitely. And yes, uh, the, this uh, process of relearning actually help the uh, IT sector to innovate new things. Mm -hmm. Because definitely they are getting feedback from the, 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 the teachers, faculty or the students. Based on that, today you are finding a lot of changes in these kind of uh, tech uh, 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 innovations or platforms. Innovation a lot of changes are as per the uh, you know customer requirement. So Got now it. they are more customer savvy. Got it. So, so so understanding from customers and platforms, why don't we move forward? And Dr. Devinda, I'll come back to you uh, after a while. And I think let's hear from the horse's mouth, like from the lady she has been winning a lot of laurels a lot of awards so divya first let me congratulate you for a lot of awards Thank and a lot of leaderships achievements great and trust me we all would love to know that how you are really monetizing and optimizing the platform and communicating between the students kids younger ones senior ones and the parent as a community over to you divya Thank you, Manu. Thank you so much. Uh, very grateful for the recognition and kind words. I think uh, it's very interesting if you see, I want to talk about in two perspectives. One in how Indian education has been in the last 20 months to say 2024 months. Uh, I think it's been the biggest blessing in disguise in a lot of ways. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the Indian education system, this has been the biggest leapfrog jump we've ever made. You know, yeah. all the people who've been contesting, not wanting to learn or wanting to shift, not wanting to shift or fundamentally questioning the need for anything digital or online, etc. Just transform with within two days when they said schools are closing last year and everybody switched on their cameras and their phones. And and I think a big salute to the educators out there. I think mm -hmm. we must all stand, I think, because in one voice, Indian educators stood around and said, India will learn no matter what, whether schools open or not. And I think we should all be so proud of, you know, what our educators have really shown in spirit and commitment and all the education leaders have come around, uh, you know, let's say service providers like us have come around to enable okay. this entire piece coming to life. Now we've seen obviously, um, and I think moderation is the key in a lot of things like, like sir said just before me, Devendra was talking about what is too much, you know, uh, after all, is online learning just about running cinema halls? You know, a lot of times I've been saying, please don't run endless cinema halls. At the end of the day, uh, engaging a human being is not just about ramming things by putting them and getting them on a screen and everything. You still have to work on how you will engage and it's tougher because there's no physical presence that you can influence or an energy that you can give more than, you know, what mm. a child is. So it's been very interesting. We, I'm working with about 400 schools, 400,000 children, 18,000 teachers. Um, it's a sizable number where I can 
look at you know what what has worked so there was obviously this surge of zoom sessions to now people understanding there's more you have to do a better worksheet you have to look at these things and i am now looking at and focusing on one very very core aspect of indian education and that is homework you know for 20 years i've sat across in classrooms in india seen teachers sure. about pedagogical strategies digital strategies everything has changed you know instruction has changed digital classrooms assessments have changed practice has changed you know tuitions byju so much is changing but mm. when you look at homework as a concept it's still the same you know you go to a staff room you see educators sitting with heaps of notebooks just for correction okay? correct you look at a student's life the moment the child enters the house the first thing a parent will ask is what is there in the homework before a child can enjoy anything is asked have you completed your homework mm. the moment the child comes back to school is asked have you submitted your homework and everything is extremely laborious and zero value and this sure. problem is not small if you look at it india with more than some 300000 private school you will take 700 students in a school so you are uh, even addressing uh, k12 section also as yes. you said homework oh, okay the entire so, k12 and if okay. you look at every child gets 3 to 5 homeworks a day mm -hmm. what looking at in india is we have 1 billion homework notebooks daily it's that's, staggering if you look at yeah. the amount of number of data that's passing but there's okay. no value transition when a child moves from one class to another, there is no sense of capturing how a child is doing on a day-to-day -day basis and actually passing that information other than test scores and assessment scores, which are which could be weekly. So now we are focusing on launching a homework transformation system. We're going to automate okay. this entire thing. We're going to free up this two, three hours of teachers' correction and students' laborious work. And we're doing preset quality expert homeworks. Teachers can create homeworks. And I want to revolutionize this space and bring value to give you education trends. Because if you get 1 billion data passing through your system every day, eventually you can say, okay, in grade four science, children struggle highest when they learn about air. Okay. Or it is linear equation in two variables in maths in grade six. So I think it is time to relook at all the things. The instruction has worked, the assessment has worked, the practice has worked. But when you look at homework, it's not touched as a bucket. Okay. It's laborious. Everybody is doing it, but not extra. So one, let's reduce the time. And two, let's bring value in terms of actually creating a child's true profile. Sorry, okay. I overshooted. So yeah. no, 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 that's perfect. No, that's absolutely look, it's good points. Like you touched upon homework, you spoke about pedagogy and all those things. Are you saying that we have to make it more interactive? Are we saying that we are trying to incorporate some uh, formats of international schools, the way they are coming up with the more engagements, more different kind of uh, platforms, different kinds of formats, rather than those standard morning schools and having those good huge bags. We all remember we have huge bags and loaded bags with copies and stuff. And definitely we had uh, Mr. Mukesh talking about technology. I'm sure Vishal will also add great stuff. We will hear from uh, Raghav about international stuff on it. But what is your take like as you're running this platform? So I'll, I'm just trying to give a different uh, twist and we would love to know on that, that how do you see the economic angle to it, the monetization? Because at the same point of time, technology and all these other things comes at a cost. Do you see that there is an audience which perceives the value or how you are showcasing that value to them? So currently the way we look at this uh, space uh, we are providing it uh, to schools because schools are the custodians of this entire homework instruction process that is there sure. at just about five dollars a day so that okay. if you look at it for the entire school to get it at five dollars is an extremely cheap number that mm -hmm. you're looking at. nothing more than about a lakh one lakh twenty thousand for an year right mm -hmm. which makes it extremely affordable to get inside and the second piece is when the child is doing the homework, you know, the system mm -hmm. has homework into the system. It's very tech savvy, etc. When they're doing the homework, the idea is to provide assistance at that point for learning material. Okay. Okay. And that is there because, you know, if you go to a tuition class, a tutor does not help you to finish your homework. A tutor helps you to learn something that the concept is. Teacher kuch padha rahi hai school mein, tutor hai aur kuch padha rahi hai, bhai bhi kuch padha sure. rahi hai. Everybody is trying to teach something, right, for mm -hmm. a test 
But when the child has to do homework, at that point of time, when the child needs support, there's only a level to which a parent can support. They may not know how to support the child at that point. So at that point, the system can nudge with the right material. And that okay. homework assistant material that we have curated, etc., we are providing it at about two dollars a month. Two dollars a month. To That's the child. A, okay. okay. And that is affordable by every household in this country. It is that affordable that we are making. But we believe schools are the custodian. That's the route that we take. Because okay. if you want to influence a fundamental change, it's not mm -hmm. about going to lakhs of kids just randomly and reaching out and trying to tell them to do something. If mm -hmm. you want to take a systemic shift, schools are the most fundamental custodians. Make a shift there, and that will impact the whole Indian education system slowly and steadily. Okay, mm -hmm. it's like it's like how the digital education happened. It happened via the schools taking that initiative, not that everybody just started learning on a digital platform on their own, right? So make that shift happening from the school and bring it. So if mm -hmm. you look at monetization, if if I just tell you the homework story with the numbers that I've given you. Uh, this industry within India is about $5 billion a year. Okay. So it's a very, very big space and a nascent space that not many people are working with. Got it. And okay. do you see the change happening or do you see the hybrid coming? Because see, until now, school means that you have to go. Now that change is coming up. And as you rightly pointed, it's a huge opportunity. I'm sure we will learn more from other people's and different platforms also. That will be great. But that is something which I will come back to you after a while coming. I think that's the point which I want to touch that how you see this gap or do you see the complete hybrid coming up or how the technology plays a role on that. So sure. moving forward, uh, Raga, we would love to hear from you how you see the international perspective with all of your uh, uh, brilliant experience in the international markets, global perspective with the standard of education. And yes, it has been a tough time 18 months, 16 months, organizations are struggling for their revenue models, kids and parents are adopting as we all are talking about. So would love to have some great insights from you too. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that question, Manu. And it's my pleasure to be here at the Asutram event. Um, yes, at the international level, um, I'd like to say that the education system of the entire world, the way education is delivered to students is at the cusp of a dimensional shift. Mm -hmm. The way curriculum was transacted up until now has been disrupted by this pandemic and we have to ensure it's for the better. Okay. The way this pandemic has hit us, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that digital transformation is changing the way education is being delivered in classrooms mm -hmm. across the world. More mm -hmm. importantly though, is the purpose aligned with the way the trends are emerging? In this hot okay. pursuit of the latest in virtual learning environments and AR, VR and other digital transformations, have we missed the woods for the trees? Now, it's not a question of if, but when at least mm. some of these technologies will become mainstream in schooling across the globe. And why do I say that? Because the new normal that's going to come, at least in my opinion, is going to be hybrid. It's going to be blended. It's going to be digital. Digital is the mix of physical and digital. But the fundamental question still lies is in, are we serving the purpose of education, getting our children ready with those 21st century future ready skills that we talk about, or are we just finding fancier ways of lesson delivery to e-pedagogues? With automation technology and now the industrial revolution 4.0, we don't need our children to be second class robots, but instead be first class humans. There is no better time than a crisis that forces us to grow and wakes us up from the slumber of rudimentary pedagogy. We can ill afford another education system that tests students in and prepares students for skills that they won't even require in their 21st century lifetimes. This is the time of transition where those trends are still forming and evolving. And it's incumbent mm -hmm. upon us, especially the education thought leaders and influencers who have to shoulder this responsibility to steer the evolution of education in the direction which will truly benefit our 21st century students the most. Our posterity is going to look back at this time and they're mm -hmm. going to, as one of those defining moments that comes once in centuries, and they're going to either thank us for the direction in which we took education or they're going to curse us for not rising up to the occasion when we had the opportunity. We're preparing children for jobs that don't exist yet. They're going to be solving problems that we don't even know are problems yet by using technologies that haven't even been invented yet. So we are preparing our children for lives 20, 30, 40 years from now when we don't have a clue what the next five years are going to look like. So my appeal to all educators and all parents is that rather than trying to pin down life to certainties 
into these boxes of certainties, we have to learn to embrace uncertainty. That's where the beauty of life lies. And I'm not saying that one should not plan and try to organize and plan ahead. Yes, definitely. But learn to embrace that uncertainty because all those plans, all of us educators had previously made were washed away by this COVID crisis. And then we came up with a second plan and then came the second wave and it got washed away even a second time. So this is the time to truly espouse and live and imbibe in our children those future ready skills that we once sagaciously foretold on the ramparts of the biggest education conclaves. What were those skills that we would talk about? The ability to cope with limited resources, the ability mm -hmm. to be agile, adaptable, flexible, to be resilient, the skill of crisis management, self-reliance, independence, becoming critical thinkers, problem solvers. Now, Manu, which of these skills do our exams truly measure? Almost none of them. Every challenge is an opportunity, but only if you make use of it. Correct, correct. We need to get rid of that myopic, short-sighted outlook where we believe we're in a tragedy or, you know, 2020, 2021 was just about tragedy and adversity and catastrophe. Yes, there was adversity, but adversity has the ability of eliciting talents that lay dormant inside us during prosperous times. Uh, Raghav, I picked a very good word, like you uh, used a word called agility. And uh, I'll just take a second. Uh, I know there are great people here to talk about. I would say, and I'm sure you people could be the best to endorse it, yes or no. I really feel that the kids have been very agile at this time. We all talk about agility for the corporate world and the top organizations. There's great sessions in the international markets, but they have their mindsets. And I think the best way the kids have delivered is like they've become very innovative the way they have been adapting to the situations and they're trying to deliver like where they was talking about homework there she was mentioning about deliveries and you mentioned about lessons skill sets they have they have been very very adaptive and agile to adapt in the situation and deliver even like see they are following what they have been told like by the school by the teachers and for every kid parents can be wrong but teacher can never be wrong in the life so they have done their best, whether it was some project work or some an art performance, some dance performance. And uh, I don't know, it can be a good food for thought for this uh, uh, segment and this industry that kids have been very, very agile and very, very productive and innovative at the same point of time. What do you feel about that? Absolutely right. You're absolutely right that children across the world and especially in India don't get enough of credit for how resilient, how agile they are they tend to bounce back far better and far quicker than we as adults do. Adults yeah. have a problem of overthinking. As we grow older, we overthink, overthink, overthink. Children, by the grace of God, inherently are not overthinkers. They are easy to adapt, easy to be agile and bounce back. That resilience is an inherent innate quality inside children. And it is our role as parents, as educators, as an education system to give more power to that rather than to build a sense of a culture of conformity that no, you can't do this. You can't do this. Let a child be a child. Once you let the child be a child and give more instill faith, belief, empower them. There is no power that can stop a child from reaching his best potential. No, no, correct. correct. We will come back to you again and let's hear what, what has been the perspective on the international market. Uh, so moving on to you, Mr. Sharma. Uh, it will be great to have some insights from you that how that part of the world, which we all talk about is well evolved, completely hygiene, spick and span, best of the monies, best of the facilities. What's your take on this platform? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Manu. Uh, it's a really interesting to see that uh, uh, particularly the like in Gulf countries and uh, other developing countries, the digital divide is not there because that had been a biggest barrier of uh, in education, particularly in India. Yes, so basically here, all those tools which which are available in market. So very first day when the lockdown was announced, everybody looked for maximum possible tools and training modules and every kind of thing. So. Basically, in one or two months, uh, the schools were very well equipped with the latest technology and uh, whatever kind of system they want to adopt. And teachers, really, teachers, if I'm talking about Indian schools in Gulf, most of the teachers are from India. And uh, as uh, Mr. Raghav also said, that uh, we are very good in ad adaptation. 
adaptability quotient of uh, Indians is too high. So the, they ad they adapted and uh, what uh, the idea of uh, having giving an education is like, first of all, child should feel safe. And we worked on adversity quotient particularly that how to develop the ad ad uh, adversity quotient and then making it more creative. So having uh, having said all small small nutshells things, we worked on one simple thing and that is related to design thinking. I was working on design thinking and I worked sure. with the MIT US and uh, with the Netherlands for seven years. So we we moved from knowledge acquisition to knowledge construction. Till here, Indian education system is doing, but we 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 go beyond. We we went to the application and creation of knowledge. Here was the problem that uh, in uh, Indian education system, in NEP they are bringing it. I had a discussion uh, with the NCRT, and I was in that committee, so we could bring design yeah. thinking in education where we think out of box. And here, students during uh, particularly pandemic, they did various amazing amazing things, and they came out with with interesting things which are entertaining as well as uh, as per the curiosity was was really out of box thinking and i thought uh, that uh, particularly like uh, we we invested good money in the atal tinkering lab uh, in uh, in doha that was the first lab in the gulf and yeah. the students picked up those ai techs ai technology and all other things robotics and all and they started picking up good good things we supplied them certain kind of things and then we had a collaboration with mumbai iit also so children got into some kind of constructive work However, children miss school. That is no doubt. And in future, they can <laughs> be mixed of both. One thing, uh, like everybody is telling, uh, it, it's it was there were many things which were in blessing in disguise. But yes, I must say the education has leaped at least five years as far as the technology is concerned. We were not knowing about Zoom and all, especially yeah. teachers. Now yeah. we know about all the small small things. So as we expect the kids to adapt, I'm sure it might be an equal pressure even on the academic staff and our respected teachers <laughs> that how they have to evolve. And it's like even it's like progressive thinking. We all are thinking with leaps and bounds because if you have because kids look up to their teachers. So still like there are teachers when uh, even <laughs> like I'm going back to what even Raga when they were appointed and even uh, Devinji pointed out very well that uh, people are more busy in ramming sessions and giving stuff. So when you are really talking about adult thinking labs and design thinking, do you think that we as an environment are ready for this complete transformational change from our orthodox thinking that okay, what is your percentage of max in uh, 10th or in 12th engineer banna hai, or it has to be only a doctor or science lady hai. Can we leave kids being free and let them talk about the latest or the current socioeconomic problems or education. So how do you see this coming up? Like, or what is the path you advise to our listeners? Yeah, Mr. Vanu, you have asked very valid question. And thankfully, yes, the time has come and people have realized. Uh, last to last Friday, I, I took a session of uh, on the design thinking of uh, Delhi principles and there were around 900 principles who were listening to design thinking and uh, all of them said yes it is it is it is time there were few principals they asked me question so now our old students are coming and saying that ma'am wherever we are going to an international market they are asking this particular question what do you know about design thinking what do you know about double diamond what do you know about empathize ideate curate prototype all that if you know then you you are something who are grooming yourself Otherwise, your knowledge is stagnated. What you know is only knowledge acquired. We don't mm -hmm. want knowledge people who are acquiring knowledge. We want people who can really generate something and who can create something. And thankfully, uh, this pandemic has brought uh, us to that particular level that in Indians, we have a lot of capability. And you, you would have seen that uh, those things were on, on, on uh, WhatsApp quite some time that a teacher in rural village was using mobile uh, for 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 the you know the, the this online teaching and this mobile was hanging on the fan and she adjusted it uh, that 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 is kind of a jugad and there were teachers in uh, Jharkhand who who uh, took the help of loudspeaker and with social distancing they were teaching teaching mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. so people have started thinking out of box and it is very important we should consider there is no box 
and then inquire, understand, constantly moving. Everybody talks about, uh, you know, Edu 4.0, all these jargons are coming. University people, I think all VCs would be knowing, they talk about tech 4.0. So what is this industrial revolution? It's bringing three things importantly, the curiosity based, creativity based, and most important, design. People used to, uh, earlier means four or five years back, people were thinking design thinking is something related to design. Now they have started right. thinking, yeah, thinking, the, the design thinking is something which is required everywhere. And whatever yeah. Divya Ma'am and uh, uh, Mr. Raghav said, that was the need. And according to need, if could, we could adapt and bring some, brought something new is design thinking. And I'm happy that children could do this. Means children could do a lot of, uh, we sometimes we call it nuisance, but yes, they tried certain kind of things. They brought few things like here. In my school, I made it compulsory for class uh, five to eight students that all of you will start blogging. Start blogging. Okay. They started blogging. They made uh, that means they made all these nearby family members as partner. And I said, I will be I will be one of the follower of yours. And I I try to give. Uh, we could achieve around 30 to 40 percent till now, but that's a quite good number. I have 7,600 students in my school. So if children, if we bring those practices to children, they will learn very fast. They will grow very fast. But yes, we must think how we can think beyond the box. Whatever is there will not remain. We no, don't no. think about it. <laughs> Correct. Correct. No, Mr. Sharma, you really brought out good points like proactive thinking, designing. But it gives me another question, and I'm sure we will have one good expert, and uh, she can really throw a slide. Moving on to you, Jyoti, if you can guide us, how do you see, like we all are talking about tech for, edu for, industry for, but do we really feel that our policies, systems, infrastructures, they all are in place for this kind of adaption? Because even I see that a lot of corporates will see this as an opportunity. So someone might say that, oh, it's a startup getting into an education domain where I bring a blend of technology and I will deliver the conventional education in a new manner. So what's your take on this? So, uh, Manu, uh, I think uh, your point is uh, very well said. Like, we, are we ready for the new changes? So. We all are talking about the children. We all are talking about uh, like K to. Sorry, we can't but... see you. Uh, just sorry, I just jumped in. There is, a, there is an issue okay. with the. Uh, so okay, okay that's just... fine. Please, please carry on. Please carry on. It will stop. So I have to speak rather than I have to like visible. So sorry sure. for that. So what happens? Uh, the new era, which we are talking about, the new technology. We are talking about the children, but are we talking about the engineering students? Are we talking about the students who are going abroad? Are we talking about the medical students? There are a lot of flaws, a lot of challenges which has brought up this time in the last two years we are facing. So with respect to that, yes, we are again not yet ready. We are like, so we are very dynamic in nature with respect to education. We are trying to bring change as and when needed. As rightly said by Mr. Sharma, I'm also one of the design thinking evangelists. I did my design thinking from Stanford. And I know how hours. design thinking is very, very important. Where you make your user in the center and develop the product or services or pedagogy according to the user. Who is our user? Our user can be our student of LKG or for 12 or for an engineering student or a medical student or for that matter an office uh, or a startup. So with the new technology, yeah, there are a lot of data which is coming, but how to use that data is again a very big challenge which people are facing. With, with the ongoing of uh, AI, machine learning, we know there are a lot of things which are coming up. But again, how to think it in a manner that it will help each and everyone as a whole entity, not a single industry or specific uh, genre. So yeah, challenges are there. So uh, for that matter, if I, I would like to pinpoint the medical uh, students, this innovations and advancements have not only helped in better treatment of patients, but also help enhance medical education models and healthcare practitioners for professionals. In India, there are nearly 1.4 billion doctors in India. Across 80,000 hospitals, 460 medical colleges with a combined capacity of providing medical education to over 64,000 students. Think the figures are promising and with new technology, innovations and the Internet of Things that we call as IoT, the goal of modern medical education are set even higher to facilitate the best healthcare to the Indian nations. 
so uh, with respect to so i'm just talking a small aspect of medical students correct think about the engineering think about uh, the students who are going wanted to go to abroad recently we have seen the us site for india was crashed because the students were trying to apply for the visa so yeah so challenges are there but yeah we all are ready with the aspect of design thinking if we have think through promptly in an advanced manner uh, as a uh, progression progressive in nature we would have understood the problem and we would have solved it as per the need so i think still we have time where we have to think through five years advance where how can we make the technology better for the user rather than just to make a technology is not the answer we have to Got make it. a technology which Got will it. help the user and user can be any one for that matter no no you very aptly put, uh, have put in towards the end that how technology will bring the change in life because see uh, india has always been very shining on great numbers but right. <laughs> the numbers are very exciting very big and uh, immediately like as even ms divya mentioned about a 5 billion dollar business you mentioned such great numbers of 400 colleges 64000 students in one category the numbers are humongous but the only worry at times that comes is that how are we gearing up and how do we see it moving so uh, vishal you feel that the technology is really playing a very strong instrumental role yes we know it is playing but how the te how technology will help it, help to structure it in a more better manner that's my worry that's the worry we we, we can't hear you you have to unmute yourself sir thanks manu uh, uh, are you hear me now yes we can hear you okay okay so uh, if we see uh, the modern uh, web uh, technologies uh, it, it started during the 19 after the 1995 uh, the world wide web uh, web are coming to the market uh, the if you see the technology uh, how to use in, into the education segment so from the initial years uh, the adoption rate of the technology in the education are started during that year also means basically uh, in, from the initial year uh, technology started in the education sector as well as the corporate from uh, if we say for the from the non pandemic time period but uh, after the all the technologies are already here uh, into the market like lms assessment platforms and learning management systems they are using into the corporate as well as uh, some big universities but uh, the schools colleges uh, and they are not ready to adopt these technologies in the beginning but after the pandemic uh, the sudden change and all the schools colleges they they don't have any other options to using these technologies so suddenly they have to use from the google classroom microsoft teams and these technologies are adoption rate are very high uh, so i think that in the technology uh, is the great impact for for the uh, mainly for the education segment now uh, i i share you uh, the some example from the skill development and the skills area there Correct. are very yeah there are very uh, huge gap between between what what are the academia and universities are producers of engineers and management students and what exactly are the required into the uh, industry and uh, specific uh, industry in across the world so uh, we are just trying to solve that problem basically and we have started some platform where we are uh, trying to fill that gap where anyone can get such kind of courses online courses these are the hybrid platform basically and uh, we are providing such uh, the instructor led training and online courses so this is the main thing i think i think so understand. so when you talk about these courses and taking from technology so let me come back to you uh, divya for a minute how do you see the delivery of the content because when you are targeting these uh, is divya there i think uh, can't see. i think divya has left she has a, she has a meeting there so that is the reason oh, okay 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 she has left okay so coming back on to this technology thing i'll just shift the focus to devinder ji for a minute and try and understand because we all have been talking about uh, students from 
the K-12 as a segment, which is to a particular segment, but from a university perspective, because that is an audience which is much mature, very well connected. So are they still adaptive to these changes or they go by their own virtue of thoughts and mind or was it very easy or was it very tough to get them into that mold? Okay, that will be a different perspective because by that point of time, the, they're still the students, but they start thinking more like adults and more mature people. Uh, Manuji, one thing uh, we must understand, even at my age and your age, a student is always a student. Okay, sure. So, so the word student, once you got a word student, automatically you go back to, you know, that uh, mindset. Those old school days. Yes, yes. yes. But yes, uh, as I told you uh, earlier also, that uh, the way student responded, especially the university student responded, you know, uh, it, it is tremendous. They okay. adopted it. They immediately reacted to that. They start using the technology uh, for the, because they know that, that it is for their betterment. Okay. Although this is uh, not a right time to talk about, but yes, uh, I want to quote it here that the way we handle the class 12th board examination this year. Okay. Okay. It is going to be tough for university and industry to coming years. I understand. I understand. You know. Because, you know, uh, examination not means that uh, it is a pressure or it is, it, you, know, you know, we need to uh, actually uh, give them an opportunity to express themselves. Can it? The examination of, is a way to express whatever they learn during a period of time. So that is why the class board examinations are very important. And mm -hmm. this is where I think somewhere we, we missed the bus this time. Uh, that may be different reason for that, but uh, honestly speaking, as a personal of my personal view, uh, this was not a good decision. And mm -hmm. why I'm telling you this thing because the question you arises, it is going to reflect the, that incoming future, because okay. the student now who's going to join the higher education, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in their mind, positive or negative, both ways. You know, their Corona batch. Mm, yeah, correct, that correct. Tag, the that tag, tag, I agree. Actually, going to give trouble to student, trouble to university, and another three to four years time to industry also, because if now this is a high time for universities and institution of higher education to work hard with each and every student, mm -hmm. because we are not knowing the quality of students who's coming and joining us. Correct. Obviously, we know that if student with a 50% marks join my university, I know that he's a 50% holder. So we mm. actually try to work hard with the student in the same way. If a student with a 19%, 90% uh, or 80%, we handle that student and say that way. But now if a student IQ is of 50% and he scored 90%. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are going to face certain challenges. Karen. Okay, so we need to prepare our, ourselves accordingly. You know, correct. And yeah, this is what I might say on that. And yes, students are uh, enjoying technology. The only thing is we need to encourage them more. We have to make our classes more interactive. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, homework. I'm talking about assignments. Mm -hmm. That assignments are basically an indirect revision of the uh, subject or the thoughts they learn during the class. Correct, correct. So, so moving to you, Mr. Raghav, in this bag of mixed uh, viewpoints and mixed challenges, do you see any ray of hope or any some exciting opportunities which you feel if we try and replicate and understand from an international perspective or we can create our own perspective. It's not necessary to copy something, but I am really sure like people like you would have been envisaging and working on some proactive things for the next five, seven years. So what's your take and a viewpoint on this? Yeah, absolutely. So there is a lot of positive to also take out of it. Of course, there's been difficulty and of course there've been challenges, but there's a lot of growth also that's happened that people have been forced to grow. Whether it's teachers or it's children or the education system itself has been pushed into a scenario where they did not think would ever come. 
and because of that they have unearthed potential of theirs that they did not even know existed people talk about children being very stressed out and all um you know and they want children to be stress free stress free while stress free is a good catch phrase one needs to understand that some small amount of stress is absolutely normal and is handy to increase focus and energy mm. the problem lies in today's world of excessive and continuous stress and more specifically the human body the hpa axis the part of the brain the hpa axis is natural response to stress is the release of this chemical called cortisol mm-hmm. the excessive and frequent cortisol release wreaks havoc on our brains and reduces the ability of the prefrontal cortex or the ceo of our brains which is in the front part of your brain it controls all the executive functioning decision making of the body so this excessive cortisol and stress reduces the ability of the ceo of the brain the prefrontal cortex to perform at its optimum capacity and it can actually make your brain reduce in size and reduce the synaptic connections between the brain cells the neurons so it's incumbent on us the education leaders to ensure conducive learning environments for our children because a stressed out child will not be able to absorb the lesson of what is being taught now education at its most fundamental core way sense isn't a transactional phenomenon it isn't about transacting curriculum the fundamental crux on what good teaching learning is based on is simply the human relationship the learning centers of our brain the hippocampus is located mm. right next to and connected to the emotional centers of our brain the amygdala science has repeatedly proven that the mental and emotional state of a person is a key factor to good learning processes now how do we deal with this the beauty of the way god has designed our bodies is that we have these inbuilt natural antidotes to stress and its accompanying friend cortisol these mm-hmm. antidotes are what i call a dose to happiness what is this dose dose stands for dopamine oxytocin serotonin and endorphins great but how do you get them well our body releases them naturally when we do the things our bodies were meant to do things like physical exercise run skip dance jump aerobics yoga play a sport the simple activities bring back the oxygen circulation in the blood along with the dose chemicals that bring back happiness alertness confidence and focus even 30 minutes just do 30 minutes of brisk physical exercise of whatever it is the child enjoys doing and your body will naturally naturally release these good chemicals reducing the stress now a lot of times parents think yes we'll tell our children how to reduce their stress we'll do this first my message to the parents most importantly do yourself the parent as the one who the child looks up to has to be calm composed and self secure if you are a nail biting stressed anxious parent and expect your child to listen to you when you ask them to stay calm and relaxed it's not going to happen humans mm-hmm. have the highest form of mirror neurons and children learn by imitation you cannot say do as i say but don't do as i do it just doesn't work that way <laughs> yeah. children can pick up the vibe from a country mile away so as an educator or a parent first get yourself in the right mind space calm yourself and half the battle will be won because worrying does not take away tomorrow's troubles but it surely takes away today's peace next let children be children play is the work of childhood i understand they can't go meet their friends at this time they can't go and go to these big parks and gardens right now but at least in the house let them run around skip hop jump dance enjoy themselves let them dance on their favorite song So get mm-hmm. these dose chemicals back into the systems naturally, because living a sedentary lifestyle or one stuck in front of screens all the time is detrimental to bringing out the best out of children. Children learn best on their feet and not only on their seats. No, so I have a lot of great insights, lot of technical jargons. Definitely, there were some like bombardiers going from my side. Definitely. and i am sure there will be a lot of curious anxious parents like me and we all are playing multiple roles uh don't you feel that at the same point of time it's equally important of same kind of an education to be imparted to the parents because see kids are largely governed by parents so yes they are uh, innovative doing a lot of things but the environment the socio economic situation family house exposure how do we address this because these are lot of great words and insight which you mentioned about and i'm sure many would be talking in one form or the other ki yaar subah uthke exercise karo that's a very conventional old school thought coming from last 4 5 7 decades so how do you see this light and the tunnel 
to be lit more you're, you're absolutely right that half of the job of education institutions is educating the child the other half is actually educating the parents and counseling okay. the parents on what the latest way of the best learning that can occur inside a child's brain now okay. a child typically stands on two legs and those two legs the foundation of the child is one the parent to the school if either the parent or the school becomes wobbly what will happen right. the child will fall the child's okay. growth and development will be harmed so it's extremely important there's a proverb in africa they say it takes a village to raise a child which is so true because a child's bringing up nurturing is not done only by the school or only by the parent it's the entire society so the entire society needs to understand what is really required how do we bring out the best in children and most importantly how do you empower children how do you instill faith belief confidence trust inside a child and not the opposite of that because the minute you don't trust a child children live up to labels so if a parent right. or an educator feels that no no the child can't do this most probably you have set the child up for failure because the child will really not be able to do it because of you you put that same thing in the child's brain that yes you are able to do it 100% you'll do it maximum mm-hmm. what will happen the child will stub their toe he'll make a yeah. mistake but he'll learn and that is what education truly is about so so jumping on to jyoti for a minute i'll come back to you raga for one last point jyoti how do you feel when we are talking about so called things of design and everything and putting up things in place are we really factoring in these kind of uh, practical situations realities of life which is a reality at everyone's house yeah so yeah uh, the reality is uh, more at the darker side if you believe that but yes accepting yeah, yeah. the reality and facing it in a in a very uh, right way right way right and wrong is again a perspective but yeah giving a right direction is very important where for the students for the kids if you see everything has gone on online mode so mm. if we don't have even if, if you go to see a small village or for that matter uh, some in mumbai uh, if you go and see that uh, raksh area people are using mobile even doctors are treating their patient with the use of mobile right. i was expecting during covid time last year and i know i have visited at least only three times in the nine months doctor was using the technology of whatsapp what can they do okay. because mm-hmm. they were not prepared they were not prepared for, for something like pandemic where if a woman a, a conceiving mother will go she can caught that uh, problem so yeah okay. so challenges are huge but yes uh, you know we indians are very good in jugaad kuch hota nahi hai to we start doing jugaad and get used to it and that that is what the the design thinking prospects or problem solving prospects come into picture so yeah Are. so with that jugaad system we try to manage things but yeah in the long run managing things will not help us to grow we will not help, to help sure. our children to help our adults to help our uh, startups or to help the company as a whole we have to foresee and mm-hmm. it is not only uh, the technology uh, in education should be supporting learning it should not be a replacement of face to face learning i believe right sure. so you know a sure. phrase called tell me and i will forget show me and i may remember involve mm-hmm. me i will understand so yeah okay. so for everything you cannot just make things and put it there you have to involve the stakeholders the stakeholders cannot be you and me the stakeholders will be even a small kid who mm-hmm. wants to learn how they want to learn who will mm-hmm. understand the language what they understand the language we cannot use the big jargon for the kids they will not understand maybe when we involve them when we make them to do some work and make them understand then they will do and that is feasible even and for that matter technology is not only the one way to, to do things but yeah as a foresight which is very important for us to design our technology uh, for five years down the line kya ho sakta hai let's plan it. it and do it as per the Got user it. that's what i no think. no i i will jump back to you and taking a word from you called jugaad and uh, ragav coming back to you for one quick thing what according to you can be the very simple three uh, top three takeaways with having a blend of the word called jugaad and the digital which you mentioned a couple of minutes back a simple three takeaways yeah um well jugaad in another way of putting it is the ability to be adaptable to be agile to be flexible to be resilient so i think 
agility and jugaad is not necessarily a bad word i know a lot of people have given it a negative connotation and try try to say that jugaad is yes it can be used badly also means no mm-hmm. preparation is also bad but um the ability to be able to bounce back when totally unexpected conditions hit you um is very very important and that's what we have to build in children whether we call it jugaad or whatever resilience or whatever it might be and sure. in a world where digital is coming going to come there's going to be a blend of both physical and digital i think that itself is jugaad the fact that the last 18 months <laughs> where most schools across india did not know what virtual learning is or had not yet gone into it in depth were now forced into it and did a fantastic yeah. job i mm-hmm. salute all the teachers out there who without many of the teachers i would say who without having that kind of pre preparation and planning and practice and research went out and did a superb job i mean the the pandemic started sometime around march of last year they had yeah, one yeah. month of summer uh, of school and then they had a summer break the entire summer break was spent getting ready with those virtual learning environments so mm. that was jugaad in some way but uh, hats off to the teachers for managing that and putting on such a wonderful show no 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 perfect perfect i think we really appreciate the way you have put it and the kind of a morale booster for all the staff and these two teachers community that's really great and much appreciated so, mo- moving to you mr sharma how do you feel uh, what do you see the difference because you mentioned that there was a session and you had almost 800 900 if i was not wrong close to 1000 was a number you mentioned uh, that teachers were there and the community is really looking up for the next thing and which takes back me to my old question that are we geared up where even jyoti added a lot of good insights so what would be your key t- takeaways in terms of top 3 or 5 in order of preparedness for this system yes nothing will change in one day but as a step 1 step 2 over a period of 3 months 9 months what a system should do yes uh, uh, thank you uh... mr manu wonderful question in that way that uh, i can give you a simple uh, what you can say the reflexes over there and the responses uh, so that was the workshop for principles 900 principles and after that uh, i am booked for 10 sessions in june and july already <laughs> so you please design. share the invite i would also as a parent love to come and attend yes yes and uh, these workshops of two days means 3 hours one day and 3 hours two days means uh, hands on now uh, actually the mem said very jyoti mem said interesting thing and what i am doing right now when uh, in uh, i'm i'm the member of uh, nep committee of implementation for one of the state in india as well as uh, one of the union territory and there we are working uh, i'm working with their professor of harvard and i can't disclose the name of the state sure. <laughs> but yeah. respect that so respect that. there there i'm i'm, I'm working on c- certain interesting things like as i told you that uh, even uh, great of the great professors in india used to tell about acquisition and construction only i said no don't stop here create similarly like uh, jyoti mem said that involve me and i will understand so understand is not enough now mm-hmm. tell that particular tell that particular child that teach someone teach someone and if you will teach someone if you will teach the peer then you will become the master and you will try to create something you will try to add something so in this so, particular yeah. chain of uh, learning it is very much important so i can see that design thinking uh, and after my talk to the, like i, I did uh, give a talk in in the month of uh, june last year and mm-hmm. after that ncert and cbse both of them have adopted uh, you know the design thinking in their curriculum so mm-hmm. it is good sign now since nep is coming so we have a wonderful wonderful opportunity to revamp the whole curriculum and what uh, mr raghav told about all most of the things were related to brain and neurons the neuron development takes place right from beginning so i am a parenting expert also and i tell parents very simply that do not use the word don't in your house try to give a logic to child otherwise this don't will come in the child's mind and any opportunity comes something will come from the subconscious mind is no that's why in the classes when you are asking a question most of the children are not raising hand mm. so this no comes because don't don't oh if he is licking the uh, licking the wall uh, jyoti mam would be listening it very nicely it's very good tip for that <laughs> that if you will lick it if you will lick it then uh, there will be some problems in whatever you want to say 
then child will yeah. have a logic. I tell you one very simple incident, and it is it was amazing for me to learn from students. There was a class two student, and I was inspecting mm -hmm. a school, and this child was writing, uh, I will not abuse, I will not abuse. I asked mm -hmm. the teacher what happened. He said, uh, last week also he was abusing. I gave him th this particular work of punishment that 50 times right, I will not abuse. I said, good. Now what happened? He said, today again he abused, so I have given him, uh, you know, kind of punishment that 100 times right, I will not <laughs> abuse. Uh -huh. I told that child, okay, better write, uh, uh, I will abuse. So he looked at me. He started mm -hmm. writing. I will, that's, then asked me, sir, why will I abuse? So the thing is, when we give a negative reinforcement, it is not reinforcement. Rather, mm -hmm. it is a kind of a devastating subconscious minds struggle with that. No, mm -hmm. no, they don't like. And children caught all the values and things from parents. These are not taught. Whatever parents will do, and it is very important for to teach parents, first of all, if we want next generation better. And uh, in education system, like in parenting, in uh, in NEP, particularly foundation level, we are doing a lot of work that how can we bring vocational education right from bringing? How can we involve children in doing most Got of it. the things in a free, free knowledge? Like, like, like I, I will ask you A4 and then all of a sudden from subconscious mind, word will come Apple. Z, Got word it. will come Zebra. I said, remove it. Show them 10 things, 20 things. Pick up A, what is A4? So let's understand what our for dear one of our panelists, Mr. Mukesh, would like to add here because he mentioned that AI is a very strong thing these people are working on and the community and he's working very closely with a lot of departments. So how do you feel that will this play a very strong role, leading minds and uh, behaviors, algorithms, everything? Uh, I would I, I would like to quote uh, one example. In fact, we are working with one of the project uh, in the UAE. What they said now since uh, summer vacation is starting, so they they want to do their children and, uh, for summer course. But mm -hmm. they say they don't want to conven conventional digital because they are already stressed for the last couple of months and in fact a year across the world, most of the country. So then we said you don't require nine to five or nine to uh, 12 o'clock kind of thing there. So it is no timing zone. There is no boundaries. Okay, you, are, you need to very uh, formal sitting kind of thing there. It would be activities and a lot of games because mm -hmm. children, particularly kids, they like games. So we are giving a task and it is through the AI basically link. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, it's there. So every children has their mobile in hand, a smartphone. So mm -hmm. they can go and check it there. Okay, okay they, they need to complete these activities and they report back. Either they can re report back within 24 hours or 48 hours. Biggest thing what we have given the opportunity is self correction. So since already answer is also in build, the moment they will put some things there, they say okay, okay, explore more. That means they creating curiosity. And when the moment it is uh, uh, answer is uh, it is getting clicked. So this, this helping us uh, to be more and more uh, engagement. And of course behind that all these uh, algorithms are there. And when you go back to see the behind the work. We can understand okay, what kind of thinking people uh, this kid has. So uh, maybe over nice. a period of time, uh, six months and one year behavior pattern, we can suggest this is more about uh, the engineering background. This is more about the creativity background. So all these things could be possible to predict over a period of time. Okay, okay. Vishal, your take uh, is it not the situation where we are saying that uh, we are putting too much of a uh, influx or a pressure of the world called technology on our the way the education is delivered or way the education is imparted or perceived how do you see is it overdone or is it the need of the art or will it also bring some challenges in the time to come no uh, i think basically uh, uh, now we are ready to adopt the technology in our education segment uh, because this, this pandemic uh, time gave us so much uh, time to implement so many things which we are uh, not using last so many years. Like as I already shared you that, uh, for example, LMS learning management system are into the market more than 20 years ago. But uh, our education system are not ready to adopt these kind of uh, uh, 
लर्निंग मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम असेसमेंट प्लेटफॉर्म एज वेल एज द वेब कॉन्फ्रेंसिंग टूल बट इन दिस पेंडेमिक टाइम अवर एजुकेशन communities basically are uh, using all these technologies very fast and adopting all these things and uh, i think uh, we have uh, ready to adopt all these things now uh, mm-hmm. for the future basically i think uh, like uh, as mr manoj already said that uh, ai is taking a very uh, critical role uh, to implement such kind of applications and platform like uh, the sentiment analysis and behavior analysis for our uh, learners and we can mm-hmm. give them uh, the learning insights also for our learner through these platforms so i think uh, now uh, everyone is ready and uh, adopt this kind of technology and there is no challenge but uh, uh, but obvious as technology uh, providers i think we have to innovate some new things like uh, some kind of best user experience some kind of best engaging content uh, so that our learners can get more information from this platform okay great no here devinder ji coming to you your perspective will be also very very crucial because if i look at as a university it is uh, uh, taking the talent and then it is also giving out the talent to the community to the industry as you said that over a period of time there will be certain challenges or there will be a certain things which will uh, we will awaken up our eyes after after a couple of years so how do you see that this transition needs to be addressed see the, that is where the uh, higher education role is very important mm-hmm. even in the past also the higher education institutions are actually working as a bridge between the uh, schools and the industry see mm-hmm. the higher education uh, institutions are not only creating the manpower mm-hmm. they are just you know uh, polishing it they are preparing them for the industry readiness mm-hmm. so their role is not to only to teach them but to prepare them for the industry point of view that's why i told you initially also now mm-hmm. this is a high time when the higher education institutions are supposed to work hard mm-hmm. okay and uh, uh, i just want to link this particular thing with the word jugaad you know mm-hmm. uh, in english alphabet s come after p okay p is problem s is solution mhm okay so basically p gives the birth to the solution solution so, so okay if if there is no problem then there is no solution correct correct so and that solution is initially actually been solved through a jugaad mm-hmm. and jugaad right. is nothing but an innovation mm-hmm. the only thing is that in india we just end up t- telling it jugaad we are not considering it as an innovation mm-hmm. so and that is here what we as a higher education institute has to play a role you know correct uh, to, the kids or uh, see uh, we can only build on the Uh, you know any any high rise building it is depending on how strong the uh, in front the lay down is yes, in front the basement and the the basement or the pinch yes. correct you know neev jitni majboot hogi imarat utni buland hogi correct so school played their role very important i mean they are they are playing uh, honestly they are working very hard mm-hmm. to provide what students need and that is why even today after the so much of technology change worldwide indian technocrats indian doctors indian uh, uh, fa- financial uh, consultants are doing wonders mm. okay so that is why because the schools give them and you know normally people say the schools are about spoon feeding and that is why we tell that when you student come out of the school they fly want to fly they they just open their wings and here we as a higher education institution we need to you know shape up those wings to a right direction now mm-hmm. we are we definitely going to work hard for that and here uh, and because now the students are more mature they understand that and somehow the, the you know statutory bodies are also now adopting the new 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 changes like for example the ugc and the aict and the, the higher education system already told that uh, now we are focusing more on a blended learning okay 
you know and in that blending learning also you now the 40 percent will be through moves or other online media and the rest in the classroom mode so we are already going through the solution what we are facing today okay so this Got is it. what exactly was the need of the r and in future also we are doing very fast mm -hmm. and we are lucky enough with the right time and right place kind of thing that we have a new education policy at this right moment mm -hmm. you know i i totally appreciate so so devanji with your words of wisdom and learning if i was to say like and i think i'm just giving a heads up to the other fellow panelists please be ready for that i want to hear from all of you and i would uh, love to kick start from you devendra ji uh, top two opportunities and top two challenges as you rightly said snp so i it just came to my mind that definitely there has to be a challenge and there has to be an opportunity see opportunities we already start in cashing that okay Okay, so is it is it a short term revenue or a stable long term revenue? Sorry, I use the word revenue, but I took a liberty for that. Okay, fine. Uh, see, normally in education we are not using these words uh, because yeah. we are not supposed to, and these are not a right uh, for that. But yes, Correct. this is going to be a long term payment. Okay, perfect. It's not going to be a short term because once you adopt something that you because you know the beauty of the IT or technology is today it is changing very fast. Hmm. Ten years back. Pace, the speed is slow. You right. know, when when we start learning IT or computers, then from DOS to Windows, it takes around eight to ten years. So and floppy disk was there at time. Yes, yes, of course, of course. So floppy disk to hard disk, hard disk to uh, you know further to uh, to other mode of uh, you know storage and cloud and all, it takes a little bit of time. But today things are going very fast. Okay. And we are good. I mean, and, and we are lucky enough that uh, the uh, the generation is understanding that, and they are also accommodating themselves, adopting themselves. The only challenge which I face is like uh, uh, that is going to be more, mostly be faced by the schools, because okay. earlier a teacher has to teach only the student. Mm -hmm. Now these days they are teaching the parents also. Okay, you know, okay. work from home. Correct. So the kid is also learning. The parents are also sitting along with them, and they are yes. asking unnecessary questions. Okay. So that actually a, a small challenge to the school teachers in particular, and definitely okay. over a period of time we were able to sort it out. That perfect, perfect. No, no, a lot of good insights, Devendra I really appreciate that insight. Uh, over to you, Mr. Sharma. What do you feel a blend of international and the national with the roots coming to Indian market? Yes, sir. So uh, I will start with basic things first of all. Sure. Yes, sir. this is a this is an opportunity that uh, teachers are ready to change. Great. And only thing is that uh, challenge is will parents be ready to change? Okay. Now, okay. That's a good now one. the opportunity opportunity is NEP is coming. Yeah. So there will be there will be new NCF. There will be lot many things which will be added. But uh, the biggest challenge is that uh, the schools and uh, the educationists and the industrialists and university people must think about the future skills. Uh -huh. that there should be, it's not like every time that problems come, then we start uh, finding the solution. Sometimes we have to keep the solution ready if any problem come, like uh -huh. digging, digging, digging the well when we, we are thirsty. No, we, sh we should keep it. And the uh -huh. biggest challenge for a school is it in India, uh, I'm telling you that many schools, many schools have closed because yes. parents did not pay the fee. This is a big, big challenge that how we can overcome that uh, deficit of confidence and the rapid with the school and parent that is going to be, uh, you know, a very important thing in India. And mm -hmm. it's, it's damaging the whole education system because now schools and uh, they are at log loggerhead. Now, if it is the situation continues, then it becomes a problem. That is a big, big challenge, and that is an actual practical challenge. Every Correct. time Delhi government is telling something, parents are telling something. So that cannot happen in education until and unless both the stakeholders are together, they, the education system cannot survive. And it is not like NEP has come, so all solutions are there. NEP also, we have to do continuous reorientation. Dr. Kasturi Ranjan has done a great work. 
our teachers are doing great work. You know, all the teachers for first month were under a scanner. Why? Because the parent was looking at them that who, who is the teacher whose pronunciation is faulty, <laughs> who is not teaching properly. And by second and third month, I must salute all the teachers. They they live it to the expectations of the parents. And now parents understood how difficult it is to conduct a class. And yes, it is amazing. So that deficit between parent, teacher, and uh, you know there is a big deficit between uh, owners of a school as well as teachers also. I hope you know it very well. No, that so should perfectly also, be, we totally understand that. That yeah. that that should also come. I, I I told about very practical things because you gave me uh, the chance of brevity. So that that is. But yes, in 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 abroad also, our government was very productive. They told very clearly you cannot reduce the salaries of uh, uh, you know the staff as well as they told okay. all the all the uh, all the parents that you have to pay the full fee because the school okay. is going on. We were having a by chance uh, physical classes as well as means the blended learning students started coming sure. from last year, September only. That that was a good thing. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, Vishal ji, your key pointers towards opportunity and challenge limiting to two, two each. So Vishal, you are there. Uh, yeah. Tell me, sir. No uh, worries. So, uh, challenges is basically uh, I if I if you ask me frankly as a uh, technology provider, I I, I think I, I said earlier we have we have that we have a lot of challenges uh, to uh, convince these uh, schools, colleges, and universities to adopt these technologies and use uh, these uh, platforms. But now I think uh, they are, uh, they actually, uh, they don't have any other choice. Uh, so th they are using all these technologies. And as I already uh, shared you last, that we have to implement and uh, provide them some best user experience and user behavior kind of things in this platform and the best quality content so that uh, they can adopt these technologies and in each of these uh, their uh, subjects and particular areas as i think okay. perfect perfect uh, moving to you mukesh ji yes yeah ji yes please sir how do you see i would say uh, in the implementation of the world called ai because that is too at a nascent stage in our country because we have picked up the words like AR, VR, AI, ML, tech. Tech is like, I wonder the kids coming, getting born will have names like tech. But in the positive on a lighter note, how do you see, sir, uh, AI really playing a big role? Because it's like playing a lot of blend role. Particularly if you see in India kind of uh, country where we have a remote uh, student are traveling few kilometer just yes. to attend the school and uh, slowly slowly from 4g now we are moving to 5g so mm -hmm. i i see it's a great opportunity so, so not necessary to uh, to get this formal education you have to have to enroll in the school physically i mm -hmm. think it is an alternate uh, mode of uh, things there if you have at least a smartphone so you know this politician are very great to give the freebies so during this election if they get okay all the student i'll give the smartphone so then then everybody will have access to a smartphone and like the league government has promised that you will give the internet free if mm -hmm. these two things are giving to them i i would see it's next round of innovation is going to happen and it's not only the a big c and a stanford kind of institution it can be happen in the rural indias also because Jugaad is definitely innovation, but it has to be more formal. So we need more to- More formal. Yeah, and, and it is more documented. So the moment you start documentation and this new things, I think it, it can change the entire world because the same Indian who whenever is going abroad, their thesis is being published and everybody is appreciating. No, no, perfect. And, and Jyoti, you are bang on time. I was bouncing to you only and I was, trying to understand from you because we have used a lot of great jargons, higher study stuff. But the reality of a country is that suddenly you are out 50 kilometers out from your main hub. 
that could be whether Delhi, that could be Bombay, that could be Bangalore, that could be even Calcutta. Uh, the scenario and the reality of life is very different, very different. So when we talk about infrastructure, and you really pointed out a very good point that people are using the technology in whatever the best possible manner, but is it a lack of infrastructure? Or how do you how you would like to highlight uh, challenges and then you see an opportunity there? That's where I would love to hear from you and will be a good insight for our audience too. Uh, you have to unmute Jyoti. So if there are many, we can list hundred challenges. But again, challenges lead to opportunity, which I always believe. No, let's try to make from hundred to ninety-seven so that we cover three. That that's the way so, to look at. So the first challenge which I I see with my interaction is resistant to accept the change. Okay. People are resistant to accept. It's fine. There is a need, so they are doing it just for the sake of doing it, but not accepting it the way it should accept it. So the first challenge I see is the resistant. Even the student, the second one is the misuse of the technology. That is yeah. the yeah. next fear yes. factor that's a good one. That, the, that the parents will be afraid of. Ki, bhaiya, bachcha, bachcha ko YouTube se kaise dur rakhe? Mm -hmm. He should not see something which he should not see at this age in time. But yes, uh, if we see uh, 10 years down the line, we ye sab available. Nahi tha. But we can't help it because kids are seeing. So every day my kid is seeing phone in my hand, my husband and hand, everybody. So how can we help it? We can't because our life is going with this uh, technology. System. But yes, it's very important for a school to make them understand the right learning and the right direction. That's what the mm -hmm. key role comes into picture. Also, uh, likewise, the cost of the technology is also a very big challenge, which I see. So. You know, technology is, is good to listen. Okay, technology here, 3D here, and all that. But who is going to incur the cost of it? Correct, again, correct. Can point the pockets of the parents for that matter. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. again, I always believe two thirds of our country is not India, is not town, is not city, is the village. So while building up any technology or any uh, product or services for that matter, it has to understand that if we are making it, it should be available for all. It should be common for all, otherwise few will lack just because they don't have technology in place. Mm -hmm. So how to incur the cost of technology is another big important aspect of it. Uh, so these are the few challenges which I see, which I think if, if uh, work in a collaborative manner can be taken care. Uh, sure. The best part is increased student engagement, right? So the student engagement has been increased tremendously in these few years. So if it, it, it is able to reflect what is, is there inside if we mm -hmm. channelize in, in the right direction. So uh, like uh, custom learning experiences happening for a kid. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to learn history, civic geography, okay, fine. You are good in this subject, you go with it. But is technology is advanced and applicable with that product or, or, or that uh, study that he or she want to do. So again, encouraging teamwork and collaboration with technology is again what I see a benefit of it. So though we are confined in a single room, but there's a lot of collaboration and teamwork is happening. I will see the behavioral part of it. Mm -hmm. Connecting students and teachers. Aaj ke date mein ek student convey kar pata hai teacher ko ki ye problem hai through WhatsApp. Jo pehle nahi tha. Mm -hmm. So kind of connection is always there. If he is not able to talk to his parent, I see he can convey the same to his teacher, right? And also improve teaching outcomes. There are a lot of uh, learning uh, accessibility and analytics which we see. Ki whether with uh, how Mukesh has said, ki with AI we can determine the behavioral chain of the kid also. So agar kuch bhi changes hai, we can always tweak it based on the data which we see of the Correct. student and of the Correct. teacher. It's not only a one way process, it is a two way or I will say it is a holistic process which is more circular in nature. As I always say about design thinking. It is more of circular in nature. If at one point you feel it is not working, go back to zero one. Don't have to complete it. Like so, complete करना है, फिर हम वापस जाएंगे नहीं नहीं. You feel that this is not happening here. We should go back to the base and then again reiterate it and then work on the process. That's how I see. No, no, perfect. I think it's very well put, and you really brought out some real practical challenges, which are there in the Indian scenario. And I'm sure uh, SHM is really working. A lot on that, and I would say, like as uh, Vajpayee said in the beginning, and I think Bharat, that's the homework for you to take some notes 
and take it forward. And I think it was a lot of good, insightful session from uh, a lot of our esteemed panelists where they really put it very right, very aptly. And before we move further, Mukesh ji, I have a question for you. There is one question that has come for you from the audience. I'll read it out. It says AI could easily be the bridge with the interactive learning environment that links the student with the latest learning and industry. I see students will embrace the change, but industry and learning centers seems to resist the change as what even Jyoti mentioned in the middle. What causes the resistance and how can we overcome it? I think it's already uh, uh, people are now open, uh, both service provider as well as the end users, uh, whether it is a teacher or university, they are accepting these things there. And the last uh, one and a half years is really was the testing time for education sector is concerned. Mm. But I feel that uh, uh, many times you want to uh, enroll into the universities uh, abroad, right? Uh, talk mostly universities. The biggest challenge, particularly for the country like India, and particularly when you are coming to the middle segment, high inspiration, but uh, uh, less uh, money is uh, in pocket. That so. Is you could not able to go and attend the physical environment. Now you have the uh, virtual classes. You can see the uh, class kind of environment and you get the education then and there at your city and your home itself. So in fact, uh, it's uh, going to be already started and uh, this digital learning or uh, AI based learning uh, could complement to our regular learning. So it's not competing each other because mm -hmm. uh, in the regular things you are doing, already attending your classes, universities are going there. And same times you will have an opportunity if you have extra time, you have intention to learn something uh, extra. I think so. the things has gone, you have to physically visit over there. Got it. And Mr. Sharma, over to you before I conclude, I think there were a lot of good insight that came from Jyoti and Mukeshi where they said that technology affordable for all. And you mentioned that you are very closely working with some government departments and some state seg segments, which we don't want to know the name, but we have a request, try to put more incubator centers like this. So which can give people an opportunity to come and they can be the test beds because globally people talk a lot about test beds. They talk about test opportunities, test facilities, which is not the case in our scenario. So that would be one small, a suggestion or request from all of us if I was to summarize in that way more incubators more test beds more testing facilities and opportunities which could be even an engaging platform which could be even a design thinking platform <laughs> that will give opportunity the consumers which could be the kids the parents the mature kids the kids who are coming for the higher education and being the bridge for the corporate world or being the entrepreneurs so thinking is to be evolved a lot over a period of time sir that was uh, that was the outcome of the first meeting uh, of ours with governor we are a five member committee so the okay. first thing he said that is it should reach to that level so we have already designated around 22 regional centers over there and okay. i did talk to around 14000 principals uh, and hms and all uh, about how we are going to do it but very interesting thing is that we should not forget about one important thing with artificial intelligence that it should not overcome the natural intelligence. You know, now now most of the children in uh, primary, if you say that, okay, five into four, he will take the calculator and say 20. Okay. So that, is, <laughs> that was that was a kind of a discussion in our one of the meeting and they said uh, AI is very good, AI very good, but natural intelligence should not go. So that way we try to involve children and then this is um, amazing thing which you talked and since there were people that incubation centers are very important must reach to the last person, the yeah. teacher. And we okay. know we have amazing teachers. This year's uh, Mr. Ranjit Singh Disale who was awarded the Global Teachers Award. He's, he's working in a village and came up with very interesting kind of innovation in education oh, by, okay. by putting, yes, amazing innovation. And he was declared at international level the best educator. And very interestingly, half of his prize money he distributed among all nine finalists. So we okay. can do amazing things, but it should reach to the last and the most important thing. There are few platforms like uh, uh, Mr. Anil Swaroop. He's uh, he's an IA senior IAS officer and an ex secretary. We are working. Uh, I'm working with him. Uh, I'm a tiny person over there, but yes, he's working on nexus of good. 
means whatever good practices are happening anywhere in country, they are bringing and sharing with other people so they can follow. It's very important to share. Like if uh, Jyoti ma'am have one rupee and I have one rupee. If we exchange rupee, still we will have one rupee. But if Jyoti ma'am have one idea and I have one idea and we share ideas, then both of us will have two ideas. I will get two ideas from you people. Correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think a lot of good insights, a lot of good learning. So just uh, there is a tinker for me on the watch side also. So yes. I will <laughs> take it back to Bharat. And uh, thanks a ton, Bharat, for giving all of us uh, an opportunity and especially me to learn a lot of good insights from such good esteemed August panelist here. So over to you, Bharat. But uh, Mr. Manu, the uh, lot of appreciation and gratitude to you for monitoring or and driving, uh, being on the driving seat. And you took took the vehicle on very correct side. Just last mm. one line I will say to the vice chancellor, sir. Uh, yes, sir. That uh, sir, CBSE board uh, has uh, you know they they are not uh, conducting the exam, but all universities are taking admission tests. So we can't admission. hear you, Sharma. Sir, we can't hear sir. you. Just lost your. Ab mute okay. ho gaya, sir. Nahi, mute to nahi hai, but uh, ah, okay, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to tell you that I was having in a VCs meeting in that state. And uh, most of the VCs were convinced that they will take, uh, you know, the admi admission test for that reason, and it will be a good equalizer. There are few states who give 100% marks, and there are few states in which the topper is getting 80% marks. So this will be a good equalizer. So there is also an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Over to you, Bharat. Uh, thank, thank you, you Manuji, for such a wonderful moderation. Uh, it's it's a pleasure hearing you and a very well coordinated program. So as we all know, change is something we resist the most and change is something we need the most. So this COVID pandemic has taught us a lot of things. So with a deep sense of gratitude on behalf of Asocha, I would like to thank each one of you. Uh, special thanks to uh, Devinj ji, yeah. uh, Mukesh ji, uh, Jyoti madam, Vishal ji for, for, uh, and Sarma ji for taking time from your busy schedule and joining today. As discussed, uh, we'll be uh, putting a recommendation also. Uh, we'll be creating a report out of this program and we'll be writing recommendations to the various departments and various states. So uh, we look forward to your continued support in our future endeavor also. And thank you very much on behalf of SO Channel. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sutin. Thank, thanks, thanks everyone. Thank you very much. A lot of good insights. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.